Hi, we have many groups here in South America and we only sing scripture songs. Why do we do this? In this very short video, we'll go over some of the scriptures that teach us this. And at the end, I will share some practical reasons why this is really what would give the most fruit. You want to stick around till the end. When God gave the law to Moses, he was to teach the nation of Israel the law. The law consisted of the first five books of Moses. It was called the Torah, or instruction in Hebrew. And later on in the Greek, it was called the Pentateuch. God wanted the Hebrews to have the law in their heart, to meditate on it day and night, and to have it ready on their lips. So God gave instruction to Moses on how to teach the law. In Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 through 7, it shows us that the parents were to teach the children the law and speak of it daily at every moment. God's word was to saturate their lives. This passage is also called the Shema, from the first word in the Hebrew, Shema, which means hear or really hearken because it includes obeying it. I made a whole video about this passage and how Jesus used it during his life. It's right here. You certainly want to watch this video. So God told Moses how to instruct the law to the Hebrews in Deuteronomy 31 verse 19. It says, Now therefore write ye this song for you and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouth. Notice, God instructed Moses to teach through a song. The song will cause them not to forget what God told them. When the rabbis would teach little children, they would start them off the very first day by the children having a tablet with honey on it. Then the children were told to lick the tablet and the rabbi would say, The word of God is sweeter than honey, as Psalm 90 verse 10 says. We actually sing that psalm right here in South America. Then in the New Testament, churches are told to teach one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Those three are all references to scripture songs. So songs are meant to teach each other. We are to sing to one another. This practice is still happening in synagogues today. If you go to a synagogue, they sing scripture songs. Of course, all of their songs are from the Tanakh or the Old Testament. That's how they memorize entire books of the Bible. So I promised I would give you some insight from practical experience. You might think that memorizing this way doesn't work. Well, I don't know how old you are, but do you know the words to the song of the Brady Bunch? If you're my age, you would know that. Did you ever try to memorize it? Probably not. You just heard it over and over and over again, and you know it. Children in our groups have hundreds of verses memorized. Actually, if you were to ask them how many verses they have memorized, most of them would say none. But then you start with a verse and they quote the whole thing. I remember a group of kids who were also in a Sunday school class. The pastor of that particular church walked in and said, Hey, if you can quote 10 verses to me right now, I'll buy you a backpack. He didn't think anyone could do that. But these kids were so excited, all of their little hands went up. He ended up buying a lot of backpacks. He never said that again. So think of the best Christian songwriter that you can imagine. Just incredible, very famous. All the music is amazing. Now compare him or her with God, an infinitely wise God who will come up with better words. This is not a trick question, actually. If you're interested in getting scripture songs that you can sing and that are contemporary with top-notch music, get in touch with me. You can memorize hundreds of verses while you're driving through town, brushing your teeth, or doing anything, and just have the songs play in the background. Actually, you can memorize whole books that way. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. If you don't like it afterwards, you can always unsubscribe. May God bless you. Bye-bye.